Hey, how's it going guys? Zedai here. So we got some fantastic and interesting news relating to the PlayStation 5 Pro. This is interesting due to that is coming from Bill Belcon and his sources, his leaks, all of his news and information has been quite spot on. So yes, he has a very, very good reputation. So at this case, this is basically more or less a confirmation for me. This is how the PlayStation 5 Pro will be. Yes, indeed. Also, we actually got a look into the PlayStation 5 Pro, how it will look like. Now, obviously, this is not a final design, and he actually has made his own illustration of how the PlayStation 5 Pro will look like. And nevertheless, and how it actually portrays here, it does look good. Now, obviously, it is going to be called PlayStation 5 Pro or PS5 Pro. It is similar in terms of the design and the look of the PlayStation 5 Slim. And here's the interesting part. It's obviously you already spotted. Now, it's actually going to have three of those stripes in the middle. That it actually will be in the space between the top and the bottom plates. And that's what makes this console perhaps a tiny bit taller, comparing this to the original PlayStation 5 Slim version of the console. Now, obviously, also, as you have may have noticed, where's the disk drive? What's going on with that? Well, his response, at least, made sure that to say he does not know. At least he is, does not have information relating to that. And this is very, very concerning. Because I do not want my PlayStation 5 console having no disk drive. Because I tend to play more often than not on my physical copies of the games. I don't care much about the digitals, unless of course if I have no other ways of playing these sorts of games that are only being released as a digital version, like for example Wukong, right? And yet in this case, if it does not have a physical uh, you know, version, like a disc tray basically, I am concerned because it's not truly really going to be worth it. But good news is that, as we can see from this illustration portrait of the PlayStation 5 Pro, it is a possibility that we can just snap out one of the plates and attach a very same disc tray <laughs> that was already introduced in the PlayStation 5 Slim. And if that's the case, I'm all right with that. Now, by the looks of things, of course, you may need you may need to actually make a separate purchase. My goodness, can you imagine the cost of the console? <sighs> Now, we got extra details as well that this console will be thicker than the PlayStation 5 Slim, but they didn't mention that it will be much, that you know, that much thicker. It's going to be thicker, but it will be only slightly. Now, it's going to have the same dual sense included with it, and it's going to be announced sometime in the first half of the September. Now, I don't know how they're gonna go about it, right? Are they gonna go with a blog page, you know, just showing it on PlayStation Blog, this is how the PlayStation 5 Pro will look like, here's the price, here's the release date, and here's what it has in terms of the performance and the tech. I don't think they're gonna go with that, right? And honestly, we only have one good, like, kind of callback of how they may go about, because the only other Pro version of the console we had was the PlayStation 4 Pro. And that's when Mark Cerny made his appearance of around about an hour talking about the PlayStation 4 Pro and the checkerboarding capabilities and how crafty and how uh, kind of genius ways that they actually gone about it of, of making their games look 4K. And obviously, in this case, I don't think we're going to go with that similar footsteps. At least it is a possibility. Nevertheless, if, they, if there was a mention already that it's going to be making an appearance uh, in the first half of the September, I do expect to see it maybe during a so-called state of play, because Jeff Grubb actually made a comment as well that we should expect a state of play coming sometime near the end of the September. So that's kind of contradicting a little bit. So what's going on with that part, right? Maybe they'll have a little specific showcase specifically for PS5 Pro and show off all the bells and whistles in the first half of the September and then a proper state of play and all the upcoming games that you can expect from the PlayStation 5 Pro on day one of its release coming sometime at the end of this year. It just makes it interesting to see how are they gonna go about this, right? So it looks like, as my understanding, 
first half of the September, like I already mentioned, they, talk, they will talk about the PlayStation 5 Pro specs, the design, and, the, and how, why they gone about it anyway, with this direction. And afterwards, in few two to, maybe two to three weeks later, at the end of September, they will have a stage of play. Now, it is quite unfortunate that we seem like not gonna be having a showcase at all, but nevertheless, you know, with the showcase that we had last year, I think it was in May, I think, yeah, I think it was in May 2023, and how appalling that was, especially showcasing like Concord, and then also Fair Games, Marathon, and no big release titles, or at least big things that people were genuinely be interesting of actually making a purchase of the PlayStation console. And in this case, maybe they done the right thing, because a state of play is not considered to be a hype, right? But there's still some states of plays that are fantastic. Some states of plays are just catered to specifically one for one game, like it was for the Suicide Squad. My goodness, do you remember that? My god. But yeah, in this case, I don't know. In this case, it will be also interesting to see how much will this console cost. My goodness. If you guys did not know, Japan, unfortunately, PlayStation increased, or Sony, they increased the price of the PlayStation 5 consoles in Japan, once again. And now it actually costs around, if we converge that amount in euros or dollars it will be around 590 euros something between that range at least around that and yet seeing that how expensive the console got and then we're also seeing kind of have to make a little bit of a comparison between like xbox series x with a two terabyte console and like having that like a very new look towards its uh, like black as well like it's pure black and with that starlights and stuff and it costs 600 bucks my goodness and in this case now that the brand new playstation 5 console cost 550 not 500 that originally when it launched <laughs> i don't know how much this console will cost now because it seems like if the playstation 5 pro will not have a physical version like say maybe you'll have to make a purchase a different purchase a separate purchase of the disc tray and that'll cost 80 bucks on top, at least I'm talking about in euros. I don't know how much is the new console gonna cost in that case. 600? 650? 700? Like, in my opinion, this is nuts. Like, I really don't want to purchase a console for 700 bucks. That's, that's a lot of money. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure, I, like, a lot of people will say, well, in that case, just get a PC. Because a lot of people will say and argue that in that price range, you can actually get a very relatively good PC to play video games on top of that for that amount of money. But nevertheless, you have to understand a brand new components, and if you're gonna make your own PC and up to 800 bucks or 700 in this case, right? It's not going to be feasible. It's not gonna be possible. Unless, of course, if you make purchases of used components. Now that is a different situation, or maybe some of the compromises you'll have to make. But again, like in this case, still, PlayStation 5 Pro will be more worth it in that case, because it's gonna be a lot more competent of a console and a platform to play your favorite video games on. And nevertheless, remember, we're talking about PlayStation in this case. PlayStation has got one of the best, if not actually, they have the best exclusives on the market. And yet they are considered to be number one in terms of the market, Nintendo being number two, Xbox being number three. Instead, they're actually moving away completely different direction. And yet, in this case, I don't know what to think. I'm worried. Yes, I think I am worried about the price, about like, you know, is it actually going to have a physical, like a, you know, disc tray? Because I want this console to support the disc tray. If it does not have a disc tray, you actually kind of pushing me away being a consumer for a PlayStation because I'm a big PlayStation fan, right? I'm a big PlayStation consumer, I'm a customer. I'm willing to invest my money into this platform because I love this platform. I love the look of the new games and the exclusives. But nevertheless, if you're gonna tell me that these <laughs> CD tray is not gonna be available with the PlayStation 5 Pro, Oh man, maybe I should just keep my original PlayStation 5 in this case. I'm uh, like I'm very worried about the future of the PlayStation, especially being the PlayStation 6. Let's say the PlayStation 5 Pro, you can make a separate purchase of the disc tray. Okay, fine, you can attach it, you can play using that way. That's fine, that's 
thank thankfully that's fine but the playstation 6 what about that like seriously like uh, we actually should not expect any sort of cd tray any longer for the ps6 oh man please don't please no <laughs> <sighs> Alright guys, that's all I wanted to have a little bit of chat, um, a little bit worried, nevertheless I'm excited to check out this console and all the bells and whistles. Now we do know a lot about its tech and the specs, I made plenty of videos about that already, do check them out by the way. Alright guys, thank you again, like and subscribe, see you guys, and uh, yeah, have a wonderful day.